Hey, what's up everybody? Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do techie lines on armor. So you see I've got a lot of this paintwork already going and I'm still, you know, dinking around with it. But uh, if you look at, you know, some of the tech lines right here, that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So I've got some of the paintwork in place over here. And once I get to a certain level of it, I just merge everything down and start painting over top. And that's what you see right here. So there's a little bit of sketch lines in there, uh, but I start to do away with those and then paint these in. So what I like to do with these techie type lines is, you know, you can either paint them, uh, if you're more confident at this, you can just paint them right into the painting. Uh, and you can have, you know, your lock transparency set so that you don't at least shoot over the edge there. So you can set that there and you can just kind of go like this. Um, so if you again if you're more confident with them, but I'm going to show you just in case how to do it on a separate layer Just to aid you in this process a little bit So uh, so yeah, so I'll start with something like a G pen uh, or a pencil uh, I'll sketch in some basic lines like you can see there and then I'll rotate this around the main thing I try to make these lines uh, curve with the uh, you know idea of um, the form so in this case, this bicep looking area, this uh, mech armor or power armor, whatever you want to call it. And I'll just kind of go around this. The other thing is I try to make the lines uh, varying thicknesses. I think that looks more interesting. So for instance, uh, actually I went over the line there, go back. So let's say that I make this one a little bit thicker down the center, quite a bit thicker anyways, by comparison. And then I make this one a lot thinner. So what I think this does is it makes it more interesting and it makes it feel like there's different thicknesses of metal that are being used. Uh, another little trick you can do if you don't, you know, depending on how much time you want to spend on something, you can get in your lines like this. Remember too, if you're not good at the straight lines, you can uh, hold shift and but you got to scale the brush way down. For some reason it gives you a very thick version of the uh, particular brush you're using based on probably pressure sensitivity. So anyways, after you get some of these lines in place like this, let's say that I just want it to come down like this, you know, maybe change the shape right there just a little bit, no big deal. You know, try to be creative with it at times. Uh, just, you know, Command Z is pretty easy to do, so just see if you can come up with something uh, new and fresh by changing things. But anyways, you can go to the very edge and you can clip the edge ever so slightly. And so what it does is it makes it look like it's bezeled and uh, you didn't have to change the edge of your paintwork. So it's kind of like a little little cheat, you know, like if you want it to look really impressive, you go back through and you actually change uh, some of these to be different um, heights. You know, you can do that. It actually looks better on like techie looking walls and, and guns and things like that. Uh, but you can just clip some of these edges and it makes it a little bit more interesting. And you know, this really depends on what type of piece this is. If you're gonna be zooming into the work or not, if you're not, then maybe don't worry about this. But I just wanna show you, that's a pretty good little effect and it doesn't take much time to do. Okay, so there's our lines on a separate layer. We can go to our sketch copy and erase this stuff back so we can see exactly what we got here. <clears throat> you can see the paintwork's still really rough. I gotta do a lot of corrections here, but uh, but I just wanted to stop what I was doing. Um, you know, I'm doing this for a series of classes and a, a course I'm going to teach on character design. I'm going to do a bunch of different, you know, modern characters. And I'm going to probably do a big uh, range of character development. But uh, this is one of them. And I like to work through the artwork before I actually, you know, obviously teach it. So, uh, so that's what you see me doing here. And it just made me think, oh, I should probably do one on tech lines. Because this is a pretty popular, uh, fun thing to do with your characters. So now we've got this going on. Now one thing I do recommend is if you did already do some, take a look at what you've done here. So in this case, I've got some of the yellow light source hitting. I've got a bit of bounce light back here. And, uh, you know, I've softened up a lot of the shadows. I still got to rework some of the shadows in there. So you can see what I've done there. So I can go back over to here now and kind of uh, keep the same concept. Now I've already got this established light source right here. So I pull from that, maybe brighten up the yellow just a little bit. And 
Again, if you're not as confident with something, you can definitely do this on even another layer. But I'm just going to apply this to the same layer. And I'm going to get some of these little glare lines. Now remember, you got to keep the light source in mind and the idea that one side is going to get a bezel, the other side is going to get more of a shadow. So, or a, I'm sorry, a highlight, not a bezel. It's going to show on the bezel of the surface. And then if something's thicker, so for instance, we kind of said that this widened area may signify that this next piece of metal is just a little bit thicker, then maybe I'll bring that out a little bit more. And very tiny highlights on some of these other areas. Now, here's the other thing. It's real easy to want to put this on every single line because it looks so cool, right? But it's going to lose its flavor. So what you want to do is just pick and choose your battles. Put it here, put it there, but don't put it everywhere. <laughs> there you go. A little rhyme for you so you remember it, I guess. Uh, so yeah, so throw those in there like that. You can even beef up the highlight in here. You know, maybe a little bit of white to really show a hot spot. So you see how that just kind of brightens it up by doing little things like that. You can toggle this on and off, see what it looks like. The other thing you can do, and I will do this with one other layer just because I want you to see the benefit of this, is you can also take your shadow color, we'll pick something darker in here, and we can shadow, and I'm going to use a soft brush. Let's go ahead and set this to normal for now. And I'm going to shadow just the one side, just a little bit. So you, again, you just got to remember that one side of this metal is going to catch a shadow, and the other side is going to catch uh, the light. And then also, sometimes you can put a little bit of shadow right next to your highlight because that's generally how it works anyway. So when you see a, a radiant light, you'll generally see a little bit of a shadow right around it. I don't know if I like it right there, but just keep that in mind. That's another uh, thing that you can do. And let's continue on over here. So even in this area where it's already got a uh, hearted shadow. I still want to add that in. And what I wanted to show you is that you can really just brush over these lines and cut back, being that it's on another layer. So for instance, you can shade right through here. You know, get the uh, shadow you want and then take your hard edge, so that's a transparent, and erase it back from the one side. Or actually, that's the wrong side. I want it on that side. I don't want it on this side. It's real easy to get that confused. And you see, that didn't even really work as well as I wanted. But I just want to show you, sometimes you really want to airbrush things in and erase them back. There's a whole set of effects that you're going to get that uh, where that's beneficial. So... Okay, so now the other thing is, you know, you see it still looks a bit plain. I'm actually going to merge these together now. So I'm just going to merge that right into my existing layer. And I want to select from some of these areas and correct them. So I'll just select from the existing paint, brush it in. You can use a hard edge brush, soft edge brush, whatever you want to do. But all I'm doing is selecting the closest paint nearby and just fixing some of these uh, little mishaps here. So this is kind of how I end up correcting my final edge work. And then I do a little bit of blending as well. The other thing is I want to select, notice that this character is floating. So I'm going to select kind of through here. Just hold shift, select through here. isolate this area really do not like this selection tool but gets the job done I just gotta maneuver around it now once I get to this area I can go outside of the shape because again the character is floating over top of the background so I can use the lock transparency feature to edit that hold R to rotate spacebar to move Shift to add to selection. There we go. Okay, so now double click here to straighten that back out. And so now I can blend this a little bit more. So I'm going to take a soft brush, set to multiply. 
and I'm going to use that same shadow color, make sure that this is locked so I don't paint outside of the confinements there. Let me go back, make sure I didn't accidentally do that. Command Y to go forward, lock transparency, and then now paint with this set to multiply. So now what I can do is get this area to look a bit more convincing, more rounded. And so what I typically do is I'll brush in uh, a little bit of shadows here and there. I might do a couple smaller shadows like this that look like uh, almost like the material stained up a bit or something like that. You know, it's I'm, I started off painting this character overly clean and then I thought, well, it doesn't look like he's been in battle. So started adding like imperfections and dents and dings. And that's kind of where I'm going to finish here. So I'm going to show you that, you know, after we get a little bit of this in, we figure out our, you know, kind of a, the shading that we want to see here. And again, we might want to see a little bit of bounce light as well. So while we got the selection, actually, I'm going to save this selection, convert to selection layer, call it upper arm. Forgive me because I got to move my stuff around here to type upper arm. Yeah, good enough. And then I'll usually move these down so that they're out of the way, but I can turn off visibility and reselect this as needed. Okay, but then I gotta go back here to paint. And so yeah, so I'm gonna grab the highlight, color dodge, go back to this yellowish tone, and I might just wanna get a little bit of edge lighting as well, because you can generally make something look more rounded. And we have to remember that, actually I don't like that for some reason, probably the conflict of that shadow, but we have to remember there's, uh, you know, some bounce light going on. This is a reflective surface, so, uh, so anything can happen. You know, this light can travel all over the place. So let's pan back. I think that's too yellow. Okay, so let's say that's where we want this part, and let's go ahead and muck it up a bit. So I'm going to hit Command D to deselect. I'm going to grab my smudge brush or blend brush, I should say. I'm going to blend in some of this stuff because I don't like the overly hard edge shadow. I like to start with that, but then I like to blend it back in areas. So some areas I like to be visible, other areas I do not. And the other thing is this, is that once I get enough of this effect going throughout here, I'll go back and I'll just mess up some of the edges a little bit, especially on this thicker area. Because I feel like it looks just too overly clean. So if I kind of push some of these areas around, it'll look like dents and dings. And I'll do that in the highlights. I'll do that in the very edge of the material, the metal. And at the very end of this, I'll add a little bit more of this texture you see right here, these little dots and dings, uh, and I'll also add a couple scratches. But you can do a lot just by smudging the edges around and not leaving everything so pristine. Even in the light source, just that little area of transition, just kind of dab it around a little bit. And that's really it. So it's like the light source, the you know the light source to one side, shadow to the other. Uh, you can take that as far as you need to. So play around with different thicknesses, play around with different uh, patterns and styles and the way that you create your lines. You know you'll see like up here I'm going to do some that are indents and kind of triangular, some that are portions of uh, hexagon shapes, some that are just straight lines across the chest. And I still got a lot to fix as far as like shapes, you know, so you'll see some, there's definitely some incorrect shapes in the shoulders, but I'll go from side to side and I'll re-edit those. Uh, but yeah, so I just wanted to show you that. So that's how I create my techie lines. And then, you know, let me know what you think of the video, what other questions you have, and I'll make sure to get that on the schedule. So I appreciate you guys tuning in and watching. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.